Hi everyone, it's Erin from EB Mixed Media. Uh, recently, I've been getting a lot of questions about how I make my background papers and some requests uh, to show how I do that. And what I thought I would do today is work with some of my new Fabulous Florals stamps that are now available at Joggles. I'm super excited about it. But I wanted to play with some of these other stamps, not so much the florals. Um, there, On each of the stamps, there is what I'm calling a background stamp and a border stamp. So I thought it would be fun to use those to make some painted papers and just show you some quick techniques. You don't need these stamps, you can use any stamps, but I just thought I would play with them because um, I love them so much. Uh, so anyway, um, let's get started. I've got a few pages here that I have made and I'm gonna just show you. These are really quick ways to get some color down on uh, background paper and I'll show you in a minute each of them. This is just using a credit card to lay down some paint. This is using a wide brush. Uh, this is using a brayer. This was a failed gel print. And so if you have a gel plate and you regularly do jelly printing, uh, keep the ones you hate and see if there's other ways you can rework it. What I like about it is it's a neutral. And I think in small quantities, it could actually be quite nice. And it's, a, it's kind of a grungy neutral and I like that. And then this is with sprays. Uh, so we'll play with that as well. I've got right. some paper cut here and I've cut it into smaller, more manageable sheets. This is mixed media paper. It is 11 by 14 and it's 98 pound paper. So it's, it's about a little bit of weight to it. It's not quite as heavy as a cardstock, I don't think. You can use copy paper, you can use drawing paper, any paper that you have on hand, butcher paper, paper bags, whatever. It doesn't really matter what you're using, um, but I thought these would be nice um, as far as the video goes, and they are a nice weight. So I've cut those in half, and then I have a slew of colors over here, and these are all analogous colors, which means they're next to each other on the color wheel, and I like using analogous colors because uh, you can't go wrong. If you're sticking with colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, they're gonna go well together. Um, anyway, so what I have here, these are apple a combination of Apple Barrel paints and this Craft Smart, which I get at Michael's. Um, and i am lately been kind of messing with um, metallics. So I've got three metallics here. I haven't used them, I've never used this one. Uh, so this is folk art, uh, multi-surface metallic, and I went for color, so they're all a little, like this one's different. I was just looking at the colors. Uh, so they're different types, but they'll work. Uh, champagne, fire opal, and pink tourmaline, I guess. And I have a gold because I love my bling. Um, and this is enamel paint. I didn't even look at the label. I just grabbed it. That's gold. So in the apple barrel, I've got apricot, flamingo coral, peachy pink, and candy pink. If you follow me at all, you'll know I use these all the time. And this is mustard yellow. So um, I often use King's Gold. Where's that? No. I don't have very much of that left. King's Gold, that's the one from Apple Barrel. So those are virtually the same paint. They probably Let's start with the first technique and that is using a credit card or a gift card uh, to spread the paint out. Super easy to do. I'm gonna start just by throwing down some white paint and let's do some of this King's Gold. That's probably way more than I need. And this is so easy and quick. You could do um, just the one whole color, but I find it spreads more easily with the gesso. And it gives you some nice variation. Oh, I've got so much on here. <laughs> but that's it. Look how quickly I was able to cover that. Super fast. I'm going to grab a piece of copy paper and just put the excess here. Oh, I should have done it here. Oh. Use my under paper for other projects. So that's what I'm going to do now. There. 
So you get some nice, uh, you can you can be better about it if you want it to be really even and nice. And uh, But I like having the texture of larger swaths here, a little white showing through here. I think that looks cool, okay? That's that technique, easy peasy. The next one I'll show you is just with a wide flat brush. And again, it's taking some gesso, throwing it right down on your page and then adding some paint. And I'm wondering, I'll wait. And then I like to just get my brush wet because it makes the paints go a little farther. And I'm just gonna start moving it around on the page. And I'm just gonna do these long strokes. See how quick that is? So these are two simple methods for getting some painted papers made really quickly. If you're just starting out, you basically just need a brush, some copy paper, and a few bottles of uh, apple barrel paints, which are very, very inexpensive. Any kind of paint will do. Uh, and you don't have to use gesso. I like gesso because it is a little thinner and it also um, is a little less expensive than white paint, but you can get white paint, I'm sure, in these Apple Barrel uh, brands that are super cheap, the craft paint. That's all you really need to do there. If you wanted to, you could add another color, but we'll leave it at that. All right, the next technique is using a brayer and you can go about this one two ways. You can again throw some paint down. Let's go with this apricot. And let's throw in some peachy pink. This is my runny peachy pink that's runnier than any other. Look, I barely have to do anything to get it to come out. And we're just going to take our brayer and move that paint across the page. Just like that. Another really super quick way to make some background papers. Again, you can try and go back over it and get it even, or you can, I like all of this variation in coverage. That's one way to use the brayer. Another way to use the brayer is by putting your paint to the side. I'll do the flamingo coral here. I don't know if that's gonna be enough. And putting your brayer, getting your brayer in there and then braying it onto the page like so. And you're not gonna get as thick of a coverage. You will in some spots, but. And then again, if you want to, you could go back in with, I guess there's still some there we can. We can go back in with, this is the yellow mustard and put some of that down. Um, let's try, I don't know, let's give this a try. I'm not really liking this flamingo coral, but this is probably gonna make it worse, we'll see. Maybe not. I can't even hardly see it. I'm sure if I pick it up, I'll be able to see the shimmer. Hmm, huh. it's okay. I'm gonna add this champagne onto it. And you can just keep practicing and playing and layering and that's muting that orange a little bit, which I kind of like. There we go. 
That's interesting. Can you see the shimmer? Yeah, I think you can see the shimmer. That's pretty. And the last one I wanted to show you today. is using these Distress Oxide So sprays. these uh, colors are Kitsch Flamingo, Abandoned Coral, Wild Honey, and Spice Marmalade. And again, those are in the same color family that we've been playing with. And these can get really messy. So I have a little box that I use and I put my paper in the box so that uh, the spray doesn't get all over my desk. And I'm just gonna take these and spray like so. That was the Flamingo, what was it? Oh, Abandoned Coral. And this is the Spiced Marmalade. And this is Wild Honey. And this is the Kitsch Flamingo. And that's another great way to get um, coverage really quickly. The other fun thing you can do is lay a stencil on there. And while it's still wet, pull up some of that color. You might be, have more luck with, rather than a paper towel with a wet light. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's working a lot better. Yep, yeah, that looks cool. That gives you just some different uh, texture to your background. And then well. finally, I wanna show you Lindy's Magicals. And these are pigment powder. And um, they're really fun and cool. Pick up some of this with my fan brush and sort of sprinkle it across the page a little bit. And what did I say? That was Cattail Copper Brown. And this one is Autumn Maple Crimson. So these are kind of fall colors. And the reason they are called magicals is because when you hit them with water, they activate. Isn't that cool? And you can move the water around the page if you want. You can make it as wet as you want it to be. Get some drips going, that's kind of cool. This is another one where you can use your paper towel to pull some off. Really super easy way to cover a lot of paper. Let's dry this one real quick so we can see. There we go. And you can see the shimmer and shine on that one. Really fun stuff Let's to use. Let's take a look at our papers now that they're dry. This was the first one we did with the credit card. This we used our um, large flat brush and I, I think I set something on it and got a little schmutz on it, but we'll fix that later. This was the brayer where we put the paint directly onto the page and then braid it. This is the page where we put our paint on our palette and rolled the brayer in the paint and then braid it onto the paper. This was our Distress Oxide Sprays and this was Lindy's Magicals. So quite a variety there of painted papers. All of them, with the exception of maybe these two, you could use as is. This has a nice pattern from the stencil in it. This just has such a nice shimmer and texture to it. And this one is just gorgeous. You wouldn't have to do a thing. But we're gonna try jazzing them up a little bit. To avoid this video being too long, I have cut up the papers that we made into quarters uh, in order to show you some ideas of um, how you can use stamping to create papers that are really interesting. I think strong patterns on papers 
offer a lot of options as background papers and papers and collage. It's nice to have that repetition of pattern. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on with a lot of these. So let's get started with this one. And for this, I'm gonna use two stamps together. I'm gonna use one from the Bachelor Button uh, set and one from the Poppies. So they're both uh, sort of circles. This is more ovally and this is a little more circly. They're hand drawn, so they're wonky. Uh, and I'm gonna do black so we get a really great contrast on this kind of orangey yellow paper. And again, I'm using archival ink in black this time. And I'm just gonna stamp randomly No real rhyme nor reason. I'm going off the page in places. We'll do some up here. And you can, which I didn't do, but you can turn these stamps right side up, upside down. It doesn't matter. Okay, and now look at that pop. And now I'm going to add this one to it as well. Let's turn it around. I want to go back. I'm not liking that area. I'm wondering if I can just get a few more in there without maybe there. Hmm. Yeah. Isn't that great? What a great contrast. Any stamps that you have at home will work this way. If you use them in repetition, you'll get some great effects. Let's try this stamp. This one is from the Summer Bloom. I call this a border stamp, but it doesn't have to be used that way. And I'm just going to stamp this in lines. I'm not going to be careful about lining it up. Remember, you'll be using this paper in other projects. You'll be using small pieces. You'll probably have something else on top of it. So any little imperfections like that don't matter at all. They'll probably be covered up. Whoa, or that. <laughs> and then I like to go back in and kind of link up these chains just with my pen where there's a gap. You'll never notice that it's there, that that's pen and not the actual stamp. So that looks great. But the other thing we can do to make this pop is color in the circles to add just another fun element. That looks great. I won't do it all on camera. Let's move on to a different one. Uh, again, using the black for some contrast. This is a really light color, so this is gonna have a lot of impact. And we can do the same thing. We can sort of make this a brick pattern if we want to line things up really closely, but we don't have to. And once again, you could color these in. for a nice little extra something. 
Next, another fun way to use stamps is to do a tone on tone. So this is our really shimmery metallic paper. And I'm gonna use this stamp, and that is also from the Summer Bloom. And I'm gonna use it in this coastal coral color. This is probably one of my favorite of the background stamps in this collection. I think it just looks so cool. And you can turn it various ways in order to get a really nice random pattern. I just think it looks great. That tone on tone effect is really subtle um, and sophisticated, I think. For this one though, I thought we might try something different and go with white to do the raindrops. And the raindrops are on the coneflowers set. And I'm gonna try and stamp these in white. I got a little bit of issue with my stamp pad. I clearly had black ink on one of the stamps I used before. So I'm not sure how this is gonna work. If anyone knows how to clean these, please let me know. Maybe I've ruined it. But this is gonna give a really nice, subtle raindrop pattern. Again, I think on this shimmery paper, I'm kind of thinking about beautiful wallpaper. Um, and I think the subtlety of this is what makes it so pretty. Super cool. You could go a step further and use a gel pen or a marker of some sort to color these in and get some of that bling in there in gold. Or you can keep it at that really subtle effect. I think I like the gold though. Let's try some more of the tone on tone. This is a fun stamp too. And this one is in the Daylily set. And this one's fun because you can get a really fun pattern just by turning it different ways. So for this, we're gonna do that tone on tone again. This is Sunflower Archival Ink. Look how cool that looks. It's subtle, but it's impactful. And see how I'm turning the stamp different ways to get this cool effect. Oh, I love this stamp. I think that looks great. And again, another fun thing to do is not color in every one of them, just color in a few here and there. Whoops, I started coloring them all in, but you get the picture. So we did tone on tone. Let's do some opposite colors and see how we like that. This stamp is from the Rustic Daisy collection, or set rather. And the color here is Worn Lipstick, and this is a Distress Oxide. So for this one, I'm not gonna do it all over. I'm just gonna do some random. And you'll want to remember with this one, it's this Distress Oxide, so it would reactivate if you were to get it wet again or put some wet medium over the top of it. Just keep that in mind. Coloring these in just makes this one fun, I think. Back to more tone on tone. I'm gonna to use two different stamps here. This one is from the Daylily, and this chain stamp is from the Poppy. 
And I'm gonna use abandoned coral. Again, again. This is a distress oxide, but so is our background here. So you'll not want to be putting any wet mediums down on top of it anyway. So again, I'm gonna do a row. And this is the tone on tone, which looks so nice. And I'm gonna leave enough space in between to do the other stamp. So you're getting an alternating striping effect. Then we'll put the chain stamp in between. And one of my favorite tricks with the chain stamp is to outline the edges in gold so it looks three-dimensional. And you'll do the inside as well. And that gives it such a cool look because it does look like a chain. with the light just hitting it from one angle. So simple, but really effective. Again, this is more of our Distress Oxide background, or it was the sprays. Now I'm gonna use the stamp on this one. And these are just solid dots. And you can turn them there. Lastly, I've got this grungy gel plate print. You didn't see me make this on camera. I had it in my stash and I've been trying to figure out what to do with it. But I was thinking this border stamp would make it look even grungier. I'm gonna do a brick pattern on here. Super grungy. If you wanna give this some depth, it's easy enough to do. Again, simply outlining one side and that'll give it a three-dimensional look. For this one, I thought it would be fun to play with some of the sentiments on the stamps. I'm sure if you have stamps at home, you do have some that have sentiments on them. And so I thought it would be fun to try and make a page that was just covered in some of these words going all different directions. It's kind of tricky knowing where to put them. That's fun. I like that one. Let's take a look at our completed pattern papers. This has to be one of my favorites. I love how strong that pattern is and that contrast between the orange and yellow background and the black stamp. This one is just lovely. The tone on tone, the beautiful shimmer. It's really classy looking. This one I chose to only color in a few sections in white and I think that's really effective. Here's our chain and it looks kind of 3D with the gold background, with the gold accents. Here's our grungy brick wall. That's a powerful piece. It could really ground a collage. This one is fun too, a lot of high contrast and I like that. Packs a punch and it could be done either way. It could be used either way, vertically or horizontally. This again is our Distress Oxides, nice subtle print there. This one's fun and bright and happy. Another classy raindrops like that. I love this. This turned my grungy paper into something really usable. And then here we have a nice strong pattern as well that could be horizontal or vertical. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you enjoyed learning some really quick ways to paint paper and then um, easy and simple ways to create some very effective patterns, both strong and subtle, just through the use of stamps. 
and maybe some pens and, and markers. That's it for me today. You can always find me on Instagram. I'm at EB Mixed Media. That's EB underscore Mixed Media. Thanks everyone. Bye.